Welcome to Love Bites. Love Bites. Love Bites. Cuckolding challenges our ideas of what men should be. They should be masculine. They should be in charge. They should be in command of themselves and their women. Hmm. But you know what? Even though it's a very taboo topic in our society, but it's so compelling to so many men and women that a lot of people are practicing it. So today we're going to talk to a participant slash expert, the expert on this topic. My loves, it's Dr. Tara. Welcome to Love Bites, the podcast for sexual wellness and exploration. And I'm so excited to hear from our guest today. Today we have Venus. From the moment Venus learned from about cuckolding relationships seven years ago, she knew it fit exactly to who she was and she dove right in. Um, she's the host of the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, which thanks to her inf- infectious enthusiasm and genuine nature has since uh, shot up to the top 1% of the podcast charts worldwide and earned a nomination for Outstanding Adult Series from the Canadian Podcast Awards. Today, Venus enjoys working full-time on the podcast, building a community for women in this lifestyle, writing a monthly column in ASN Lifestyle Magazine, and doing live audio chats on the Moan app. Her newest venture is a private matchmaking service called Venus Connections for single women and men who are looking for a loving, cuckolding relationship. Hi, Venus. Hello. Thanks for having me on your show today. Okay, before we go into your history, I just want to get this over with. What is Venus Connections? I'm excited for you. Oh, yeah. I think I, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it is the only service of its kind in the world because it's so niche. It is just a private matchmaking service for singles who are looking for a loving cuckolding relationship. So it's like matchmaking, but it a- adds this lad, this layer to it. So uh, it's it's pretty unique. I'm so excited for you. It sounds like a perfect fill in the gap, right? Because like business people always say, find a problem and find a solution. And I feel like that is the the solution that you be offering. Well, I I actually never really wanted to venture out and do it, but I was just got so frustrated that it didn't exist that I was like, you know what, fuck it. I will do it myself. Love that. (laughs) Be the change you want to see in the world. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so before I go into like the technical questions of cuckolding, I want to hear more about how you got here and that moment seven years ago. Yeah, so I actually stumbled across this guy on Tinder, Tinder of all places. <laughs> Tinder! Tinder! <laughs> Um, and we started chatting and and he started, like on my Tinder profile, it said I... I not really into being monogamous. And I, I guess like he, he was really intrigued by that because he was asking me all these questions about it and everything like that. And then he slowly started to introduce this idea of this like one-sided open non-monogamy, which I'd never heard of before. But, uh, and then he was talking about how he really liked it that way. And that he loved the fact that I was, you know, sleeping with other guys and stuff. And he, and I just was like, mind blown. I I was, I couldn't believe it. He was like, I was like, you want me to sleep with other guys and you, you don't want to sleep with other women and you like love this side of me. I I was just like blown away. I thought this is way too good to be true. I, I was, I'd never heard of cuckolding before. I think I might've heard the word once ever and I didn't know what it meant. And so, um, I was just like, what is this? And we kind of like just dove into it and it was so fun and just so new and so incredible and and I just thought I I didn't know it existed and I thought there's probably other women who don't know it exists as well I thought it'd be way too selfish to ask for that you know (laughs) yeah (laughs) but I've I've never heard of cuckolding until I think four years ago so yeah. I feel like even though it's been practiced a long time, because according to a lot of like studies, it's been practiced a long time. It's just, it was never talked about. 
Yeah. Until only recently. And, you know, I teach a college class on sexuality. I'm pretty ashamed that I only know about like modern practice of cuckolding like four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> right. So know, it's you met been this going guy. on forever. <laughs> yeah. So you met this guy and that kind of sparked your whole journey. And now you're like a spokesperson. <laughs> Yeah. Then I started blogging be- and I'd never written a blog before. I'd actually never read a blog before. I just was like, I, I don't know how to, I'll make this site and I'll start writing. Cause I just wanted to write about my experience. I made a, per- I, I made a, a, a purpose of not uh, researching cuckolding. Yeah. I really just wanted to write about it. It's my own experience and what yeah. that was. And so that's kind of how it started. I really wanted to share this with other women and be like, look, if you feel like this would suit you, it exists. There are guys out there who would be so happy to be in this kind of dynamic. So wow. that's kind of like how it started. And and that kind of blew up over the years. And then I just randomly start decided to start a podcast and talk about yeah. it even more. <laughs> I think that's incredible because I'm sure in a world where there's billions of people, I'm sure there are like lots of people that want to know more and just wouldn't even know where to go. Now yeah. they know exactly where to go. Listen to Venus <laughs> Cuckold Dress podcast. Now, uh, is Cuckold Dress an actual word that a lot of people use or is it like something you came up with? I did not come up with it. No, <laughs> no, that is not my word. It existed long before I came along. Um, it's a long ass word and it's hard to pronounce. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, we've, we've shortened cuckold to cuck. So maybe we can shorten cuckoldress to cuckress or something nice. Cuck-dress. I don't know. Cuck-dress. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so you're the expert. Can you first teach us uh, what are the elements of cuckolding? Oh, okay. Where do I start? Okay. <laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah, for me, for me, I I feel like what makes it unique is that kind of one-sided open relationship, that kind of dynamic that seems huh. so unfair to people. People are automatically like, "Oh, well that sucks. You're getting all of this extra sexual attention yeah. and experiences and he's not like that that doesn't seem fair but when the, what they don't realize is that it's very much a two-way street that there's so much given taken and and really it's like a positive feedback loop that's happening between you two wow. that there that there's so much and in fact there's more to it I think than regular vanilla relationships, like it is so bonding. It is, um, you create this like immense level of next level love and, and trust and communication comes along with it. And that was the part that blew my mind about this kind of relationship where I was just like, wow, I felt like this is something really different <laughs> for wow. me. And for, like, I'd never experienced anything like it. Hence, I've never gone back to that kind of like normal relationship before. <laughs> like I'm after that, I'm like, all right, well, I guess, you know, this is me that I felt yeah. like this really fits who I am. So I feel like it's that one-sided open relationship that, that's very unique. Yeah. But as I'm sure you've already figured out, there's just this really wide spectrum of different practices within cuckolding. Yeah. And I think that, and then there's new terms and stuff that have come about in the last four years. Like so many um, terms, right? Stag, vixen, hot wife, and all like all of this stuff. And you're like, wait, what? Like, what is all this? And how do you define the differences and everything like that? For me, I, I, I feel like it's just like one big cuckold umbrella, cuckolding uh-huh. umbrella. And then you've got different kind of dynamics within that. And some people really enjoy that kind of teasing part of it. Because it, wow. it, it is kind of unfair. It seems uh-huh. like that. You might as well dig it in a little bit and have fun with it. And it's this like, and I hate that word humiliation because people right. think about that as something really mean and cruel mm-hmm. and un, and not nice. But Everybody knows sexual teasing is fun. Like it's, mm. you think about a strip tease, cuckolding is a yeah. mental strip tease. It really is. And and it is a game that you play together that you can learn that is really fun. But some couples don't. They're just like, no, I, I don't want, I don't play that game. Right. Um, <laughs> he just really enjoys her having these other experiences. Mm. And I think that no matter how you look at cuckolding, hot wifing, whatever, that really this is about 
elevating a woman's sexuality and, mm. and actually just giving her the keys to open the door to explore that. And that is the part about cuckolding that we don't hear much about. Right. <laughs> Exactly. I love this. Um, in your opinion, what is a major benefit of cuckolding for the couple? Yeah, so it's definitely very much like I remember my first experience right afterwards. He, my cuck said something to me. He said, I feel like I trust you even more after I had just slept with another guy. And uh -uh. I just, and I was like, th those words really stuck with me. There is this kind of enhanced trust that really you're, you're pushed into a deeper level of trust that you didn't know existed with this kind of relationship. And it has to be all about tr uh, trust. So there's the trust factor, but there's the communication part that has to go with it as well. And I think mm -hmm. you get that with, you know, different types of non-monogamy or kink mm -hmm. relationships that has to be a factor within it. Um, and then the, just this next level love that comes mm -hmm. with cuckolding that I, I haven't been able to find anywhere else. Like, mm -hmm. and that's the thing actually with my matchmaking service, i polled I surveyed some of the women in the program because I would I really wanted to know ladies what is it about this kind of relationship that appeals to you why do you want this uh -huh. and I asked them two questions I said when you first found out about it what was it that that interested you and they they most of them said it was the one-sided open part of it that they were like that sounds pretty good. <laughs> and I think if you ask a lot of women, they're like, yeah, that sounds amazing. You have like this loving, devoted partner and you get to have all this other fun. Yeah. And you both love it that way. That sounds amazing. Sure. Sign me up. Um, but then afterwards I said, I, now after you've learned about it and after maybe you've actually, you know, had this kind of relationship, what is it that appeals to you most now? And they said that it was still the one-sided open part, but they also said they didn't realize, but they realize now that they're, that this is really female focused, that this really is about part of putting her on a bit of a pedestal. Uh -huh. And the other thing that they realized now that they didn't know then was that, um, that this kind of relationship does bring that next level kind of love, trust and communication and bonding and so I think that when it comes to, for me anyway, educating women about what this is all about and the benefits for women and couples, we need to um, echo those couple of things that people don't realize in the beginning is a big benefit. Wow. Uh, I'm so glad that you're explaining that in a more detail uh, because I think there's a lot of nuances in cuckolding relationships uh, to the point where I also want a clarification. So is like when a couple practices cuckolding, let's say here and there, like let's say they try it like once a year, would that still be called like a cuckolding relationship? Or is there a specific dynamic to, to couples that practice it regularly? And that is a cuckolding relationship. Yeah, it's kind of tricky. I mean, uh, for some couples, this is just a, like a little bit of spice that they add it to their bedroom yeah. life. And it, it's just, you know, one of a, you know, a bag of spicy kinks or whatever that they are introducing into their relationship. It's not really like their relationship revolves around that or that they, they're, you know, that it's the focus of it. But uh -huh. then there are couples that this is their sex life. This is, this is the biggest, you know, component of their sex yeah. life and like plays a big role yeah. in that dynamic of their relationship outside of sex right absolutely because this is what's fulfilling for them and I think that's where it it you know how it depends on whether or not this is something that revolves around them or not is do you do you require this to feel fulfilled in your relationship? For me, that is like a giant yes. <laughs> yeah. But for some other people, it could be like, yeah, I could go with it or not. I mean, it's whatever. It's fun. Um, for you, uh, what is the relationship structure? So, uh, right now, I'm single. Okay. <laughs> I that was it was an amazing experience in my first uh, with my first cut 
a boyfriend that was just like a mind blowing experience. It didn't last. It was long distance and it was really difficult, mm. but it was like amazing. So then I started dating. I found this amazing partner and unfortunately he passed away. I <gasps> took a long break from everything. And then I was in the position of dating in this lifestyle, which yeah. was awful. And uh, so it's been a real experience. Well, that's why you're you. starting the business. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I have had relation, you know, relationships here and there, but, um, currently single right now, Ooh. but the way, the way I really enjoy cuckolding and like everybody has their own kind of way of doing it. But for me, I, it's not so much about him watching me, um, in fact, I prefer like maybe not. <laughs> oh, okay. I really like the um, like I like the mental game. Like I said, when it comes to cuckolding, I like the the kind of tease. And yeah. um, this is very much an intellectual kind of um kink. And mm. I really like it when he can listen in. <sighs> That's so fun because he's got to kind of imagine what's going on. He can listen. He can hear a bit, oh, and you can cool. say things to him, and. I just really enjoy that part of it. Or there's like um, FaceTiming for a quick Ooh. little bit. Uh, <laughs> or he's nearby. He can hear something going on, but doesn't know exactly what's happening. Or he hears about it when I get home. Oh, that is the best. I see. There's I many love different that. options. Yes, there's so many different <laughs> options. There's so now many. Uh, do you know people who also do the flip version where the woman is the cock? Not really. Um, I it's not it's definitely not doesn't seem as common. It is a right. thing. There are women out there who do really enjoy that. Um, but I know a years, couple. They just don't want to be interviewed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. a couple of them. That I'm like, do you want to come on my podcast? They're like, no. <laughs> Yeah, they're hard to not, I would say they're easier to find now because of things like the Mon app and things like yeah. that, where you people can connect. Um, but for the first, I don't know, five, six years that I was doing this, I hadn't come across anyone. So yeah. um, it's only recently. Mm. Okay, well, uh, I have a couple more questions. Sure. Another question is, you know, you must have had like really amazing, liberating sexual experiences. So can you tell me about your most liberating, fun sex experience as a cuckoldress? Yes. Uh, so, okay, let me think. <laughs> yeah, feel free. I'm sure you've had like a really amazing sex. So like what would be one of the ones that you want to share? Well, okay. So before I got into this cuckolding thing, I was very much a unicorn in the swingers lifestyle. And I oh. basically... Can you uh, clarify to my listeners what that is? Yeah. So unicorn is like the solo uh, woman who uh, is the third in a threesome usually. So very sought after. <laughs> that's probably, that's <laughs> Which probably, you love. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why I really took to cuckolding because I, I liked to go and be that center of attention. And I like to um, go and make the decisions of where I wanted to go and who I wanted to be with uh -huh. and all that sort of stuff. But okay. So yeah, in that, in that arena, whoo, I had some experiences. <laughs> I had a lot of really amazing experiences in that. Um, but it was okay. So <laughs> which story do I go with? Okay. I'm just going to say I'm my, excited. <laughs> okay. There was this store this time when like, uh, I was, I'm really loud when I'm fucking and, uh, cause I'm a bit of a size queen. So I like big guys. And, and there, there was one time where like, wait, wait a second, size queen. Yeah. That's when you like guys who are bigger longer than average like so, penis size or body yeah, yeah, size yeah. oh no 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 I'm talking about dicks yeah oh okay so big cocks is your yes that. so that's a size queen that's a size queen <laughs> yeah yeah and so I I'm like pretty loud and so there was like you know five police officers that ended up coming to the door because the neighbors thought someone was dying <laughs> because sex was so good it was so good it was so good what was so good about it Oh, 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 he was something else. That guy, um, he would try things that, uh, most normal people wouldn't like, he like realized, moves? like, 
not really moves, but like he realized that I really like to be stretched out. Like I, most women shy away from that. They're like, that's uncomfortable. I don't like that. Whereas me, I'm just like, oh my God, I, it is almost uncomfortable, but I enjoy it. And that's just, that's just we, how I get. Are off, we talking right? about your pussy or anal? Yeah, no, 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 no. God, stay away from my ass. No, no, no. <laughs> Not an anal girly, I see. No. But, <laughs> but stretched out. So like, just, just shove it in. <laughs> well, he was, this guy was really big as it was. And then like, he would basically like experiment with like fisting and stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, there was at one point he would like slide his dick in and then he would slide his hand in next <gasps> to it. Whoa. And I was just like, who does that? Who, who thinks to do that? <laughs> That's advanced. <laughs> Right. I was just like, I've so never was he like just a guy that. that had a lot of experience. No, I just think he had like just a very like what some guys when they get into sex, they really get into like this zone where they just, you know, th nothing else. Yeah. Is, you know, and that's how we were together where we just, you know, it was very yeah. intense. And oh, that's the best fuck. It was something else. Let me tell you, after uh, after we stopped seeing each other, I was like, I'm crying. I'm never going to find you. anybody. Miss your dick. Like, <laughs> what? Because he was So was that different. a threesome? Was it, was it him and another guy or? No, it was, it was just, just with him. him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I feel like that intensity, chemistry, and focus really made it so significantly better than others, right? Plus, like, the stretching part. Where, yeah, like, like doing we things that maybe other people don't feel like they dare to do. Yes. And I think that he was always like very kind of from a young age, very into sex. Like he was yeah. just, yeah, just into it in a different level. <laughs> I like when people can get in the zone. Yeah. Uh, it's so unsexy to have sex with a partner that's like not in the zone. I and almost want to like stop. Yeah, <laughs> like, you can uh, tell. Let's just go get ice cream. Like, I don't need yeah. this right now. And, you know, no pressure. But it's just like if you're not in the mood, then it's like not good. It's yeah. mediocre sex and no mediocre sex. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it could be, you know, it's not great. It's not bad. It's just, it's, it's whatever. just there. Yeah. But yeah. You, you, I can tell when my partner is not quite like in that zone and when I'm not. And it's easier for me to dive right in when my partner is like literally just devouring my body yeah. you know <laughs> Ooh, damn gr I'm, I'm imagining it in my head I'm like that's just so hot <laughs> it was, <laughs> what it was is amazing. your advice let's start with women uh what is your advice for women who want to introduce cuckolding to to their relationships yeah so that's very uncommon I mean I would say definitely nine times out of ten it's the husband the guy. Or, yeah the guy who's bringing it up to her and um wow okay I mean, then I want to flip always. that <laughs> let's yeah. start with how what would be your advice for men who are listening and are like oh damn I'm interested how do I even start talking about it like is yeah. there like a protocol that you've seen where it makes it easier yeah. Oh, for sure. This is key. This is absolutely key. Ooh, because... What's the key to introducing cuckolding? Okay. So let me, let me just say what not to do. So don't yeah. go to your wife and say, it'd be, it would be so hot if you fucked other dudes and I could watch. <laughs> just don't. Like period. <laughs> just... <laughs> just don't. She's going to be like, wait, wh what? <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> about? No, really. It's going to go. It's, it's probably not going to go well, but if you can, introduce it to her in a way that really puts her first and foremost and say like something to the effect of like I would really love you to have you know other experiences if that's what something that you would desire you know things that mm. um, like focus on her desires and her fulfillment and not so much about your own fantasy so don't try to direct this script like a little like mini Spielberg and <laughs> I want you to fuck this guy in this position wearing this with this lighting and he's got to be this size of blah 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 like just don't just don't go there is that what people usually request they, like the guys get really, really, really hung up on all of this, like details, details. I, yeah, it has to look this way. It's got to be like that and whatever. And it really, it's going to be, it's going to come down to whatever she wants it to be, 
whatever she wants it to look like. She might not want you there. Too bad. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard uh, people practicing um, uh, cock holding in conjunction to race play. Have you heard of that? Is it a thing? Yes, this is definitely a thing in Tell me more. <laughs> I would say it is not as common as people think it is, okay. but it's just in um, porn. It's in porn. In porn, it yeah. is huge. It's it like absolutely huge. only one genre. Like it's just yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. And I think it comes down to um this like uh different levels of teasing. And so, you know, when it comes to like there's a like big black guys being the bull the one who's gonna come in and you know fuck your wife like amazing <laughs> then uh then it, the, it's it's easier for them to picture that as someone that's not them you know that's someone that is different and and like more um capable of doing that so this is definitely a thing in in cuckolding for sure but it like I said it's it's not it's not the norm it's not it's the norm. just one of many things yeah what is uh what tends to be like one popular request when people start exploring this? Like what tends to be something that people fantasize about? So I think that uh, couples believe that their very first time cuckolding is going to be this like amazing fireworks display of perfection. <laughs> and it's not going to be like that. Is it usually just pretty goofy or? Yeah. <laughs> It's probably going to suck it a little bit. Like, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. You're going to go through a lot of guys before you find the right one, like a lot. So um, the like, experience, like, so just like temper your expectations in the beginning and try not to compare yourself to what other couples are doing. Because yeah. what my ex first experience was like was unique to me, but it doesn't mean that that's what it's going to be for you or has to be for you. I mean, you, you sculpt it however you want to sculpt it but also leave some leeway for creativity as you go mm, love that be be flexible absolutely you have to be <laughs> so um I know it doesn't happen a lot but I do want to offer it as a resource like what if the woman who's listening to this podcast right now is like I'm interested how do you think she should bring it up is it just the same way as the man would yeah, I don't know. Like this would be difficult because yeah, I can the one-sided open part is it really appeals to a certain kind of guy where he's kind of wired to really enjoy that. Now that's not to say that there aren't a lot of guys who are wired that way because clearly there are. <laughs> oh yeah, the, <laughs> the more you know, shows. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The more I talk guys. to people and the more I'm exposed to different people. The more I, I I learn that so many people are into it, and yeah. some of these people are like my dentist. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, it's so interesting. Absolutely, and and so there's a lot of guys who are who would be probably like, yeah, that that sounds kind of hot. Like we, maybe, we yeah, like yeah. okay, like let's say the sin scenario is she's interested she wants to try once at least like to see what's up yeah. uh maybe he's like a, a soft maybe so like a potential mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what what do you think she should like say just like hey um obviously not like i want to get fucked by another guy. <laughs> <laughs> um well you could like i guess watch some Stuff together or I would together. say amateur amateur go amateur, amateur. please don't watch yeah. the other stuff because <laughs> then it'll be too perfect because it's it's fake well a lot of it is heavily on the um uh femdom mm. extreme humiliation degradation mm. side that's just a very easy script to portray mm -hmm. on video mm. and so that's what they go to a lot in cuckolding porn um but it's not the norm in my right. experience but mm. um but amateur stuff is great because then they can get an idea of what this is really like and so they can watch something that like that together or just dirty talk in the bedroom oh my gosh you can do a lot with this cuckolding stuff you can do yeah. a lot <laughs> and just start talking and then he goes huh yeah wait what <laughs> wait what <laughs> did you say someone else fucked you in another hole what <laughs> Uh, yes, some guys really enjoy hearing about their um partner's previous uh 
boyfriends. Yeah. Yeah. I know yes. quite a few guys that are really into that and they want their girlfriends to get really into the details. Yes. Not just not just like, oh, my ex was so good at sex, but like really like talk about his dick. Talk about the yeah. veins on his dick. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, my last question is, this is a little tough, but I gotta ask because there are people out there that are so against cuckolding. Um, as a practice, as an, an idea. Um, there are many arguments that are against it, but I have done my studies, <laughs> just like reading through different articles. And I think the main one is that there is um, something psychological factor uh, that like, for the lack of a better word, people that want to practice this are psychologically fucked up. And uh, and I personally disagree with mm -hmm. this argument. So I just want to put it out there because I think when people want to have kinky sex, it doesn't have to be explained by some traumatic childhood. Like some <laughs> people are just kinky and it's I think I find that natural. What do you say to that type of like against cuckolding argument? Yeah, I, I think that that's likely coming from someone who really doesn't know and understand or hasn't looked at the research um, regarding these kinds of relationships. And maybe that's typical of uh, a lot of outside of the box kind of relationships where people's immediate instinct is to think, oh, that's unhealthy. There must right. be something wrong with you if right. you are drawn to that or if you enjoy that kind of thing. So I think that it's about education. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, yeah. Listening to more resources, listening to your podcast, read Dr. David's uh, book. Yes, right? yes, absolutely. Read Insatiable Wise by Dr. David Lay, and you will just be mind blown about, you know, what this is really like, because he wrote that book, because he, as a, a therapist, was he had that idea of, oh, this must not be healthy. Right. And then it wasn't until he started talking to couples and realizing like, hey, actually, this does sound pretty healthy. And so that's why he dove in and did all the research and wrote the book about it. So it's pretty fascinating. If someone has a really closed mind about this kind of relationship dynamic, then I encourage them to go out and actually seek out some information from various sources beautiful and I completely agree with that and at the end of the day you don't no one forces you to practice anything right so it's like just <laughs> I think social tolerance and like don't yuck other people's yum would be like the best way to go it's it's almost to me to me the different kinky sex practices is to me it's kind of like just variety mm -hmm. and some people like it some people don't and there's no need to force anybody to be a certain way. So yeah. if you only prefer one thing, that's fine. Um, but it doesn't mean you should accuse other people of having like mental disorder because they like these other things. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> what is your last uh, advice, let's say, for um, couples that are interested? Now it's a couple and they are interested. What, mm -hmm. what, what should they do? Um, okay. So if they're just interested and just learning, um, seek out some other couples in this lifestyle. I think that that's a tremendous benefit, especially for the women um, mm -hmm. to be able to speak to others, but also for the guys. I mean, on the Moan app, there's been guys who've been able to talk to other guys who mm -hmm. are into this as well for the first time in their life, be able yeah. to actually speak <laughs> They're like, I don't know this. a single cock in the world. Yeah. But come to this app. So again, it's the Moan app. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll have the link in today's show notes. But tell me more about this like interaction to learn more. Yeah, so it is really key for couples to be able to reach out and actually, you know, talk to each other. I have a private women's group just for women who are either interested in this kind of relationship or experience or whatever, or just want, you know, ask questions. Because it's one thing when your your husband is the one saying, "Oh yeah, let's do this, let's try this, whatever," um, and you know, but it is a different thing to be able to confide in another woman and say, "Like I'm worried about this," or "What about that?" Like, what if I hurt his feelings or, you know, like these kinds of, of conversations are so crucial 
for, mm-hmm. for couples to be able to partake in. Um, and then just take your time. Like I said, there's no rush. You don't have to feel compelled to dive right in. I dove right in, in the beginning <laughs> and it was fun and everything, but you know, you can easily make mistakes and, yeah. um, yeah. And so it's, it's, it's better just to take your time. Take your time. I love that. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. The You're next welcome. segment of this show is called five quickies with Dr. Tara. Are you ready for quickies? Let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to give you a word and just give me a response back. Okay. Okay. Number one, bukkake. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, BDSM. Fun. <laughs> Number three, ball gag. Ooh, kinky. <laughs> Have you tried it? No. <laughs> Would you? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I I I can with a small ball, but like some guys are like, I want you to put this in your mouth. And it's like a huge ball. And I'm like... I have small face, like small mouth. <laughs> like, I have to take out some molars to make this happen for you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not worth like ten thousand dollar dental work. Let's <laughs> say that. Yeah. Um, number four. What do you think about consensual non-consent? Oh, fun. Have you tried it? <laughs> No, but I can definitely understand yeah. how that would be really fun because that seems like a boundary that would be like pretty thrilling to cross. How I I love that you use the word thrilling. That's mm-hmm. an interesting word. And lastly, number five, taint massage. Taint massage? Yeah. Is that pussy massage? Because if it is, sign me up. <laughs> I don't know what taint massage is. The area between your uh, vaginal opening and your butthole and massaging that area. What do you oh, think? Do you oh, think hell good? yes. Oh, I, I have had it. Yes. Oh, yes. you just use different words. Just like massage sensual, my whole pussy. Sensual massage. I There are guys out there who, who enjoy giving sensual massage, no reciprocation whatsoever. And Ooh. I'm just like, come on over. Let's do come this. Come on and- over. Come on over, babe. It's, yeah, it's amazing. This needs to be more of a thing. There needs to be classes. Preach. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm there with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Where can my Love Bites fam find you? Thank you so much for having me. Uh you can find out more information about myself and the podcast at venuscuckoldress.com. And the matchmaking service is venusconnections.com. And you can also find me on Twitter. My handle is at cuckoldress V. Love that. Uh, my Love Bites fam, I'm going to have all those links in the show notes. So definitely go give Venus a follow. And other than that, have an orgasmic day.